So what is this secret crop that's in your garden? Well, not only is it the most abundant crop, it's also the crop that contributes in the most crucial way for us to have a healthy and thriving garden. Understanding how to cultivate it is a very simple skill and it's nearly impossible to kill it, provided that you're following natural gardening practices. If you haven't guessed it yet, it's microbes. So in recent years, the topic of microbes in our body has become pretty popular. For example, gut health has been an absolute boom in fermented foods, be it kombucha, certain types of yogurts, lacto-ferments, all of those amazing things. And their benefits for us in terms of our health, um, our well-being, our immune system, is really, really important. And the exact same thing applies to the garden. According to Professor Tim Spector, author of Spoon Fed, there's apparently more than 100 trillion microbes in our gut, and that weighs more than our brain. Well, certainly more than my brain. So just imagine how many microbes there are in your garden. So let's explore the impact that microbes have on your plants and the easy ways to cultivate a microbially rich garden and all of the benefits that comes with that. The first benefit is how microbes help with nutrient availability for plants. What microbes do is that they can digest, in a sense, minerals that plants can't uptake, but they digest it into a form which allow the plants to take on these nutrients. You've got microbes such as mycorrhizal fungi and rhizobacteria, which work really well with this. They form a symbiotic relationship with the plants. We have a trade of nutrients and minerals. For example, plants as well are equally important for a healthy soil because they're sending out root exudates. A second benefit is disease suppression. So one of the ways that that happens is all of these leaves of these plants have loads of microbes on them. And so it means that if a pathogen comes along, there's not a load of space where it can take over that other microbes aren't already occupying. And it prevents those pathogens from taking a foothold and taking over the plant and causing a lot of issues. The exact same thing happens in the soil. So when you have a soil that is microbially rich, it's really hard for a pathogen to take over because there's diversity in that. And that's the same thing that happens with our guts. If we have a microbially rich gut biome, it's harder for something to take a hold and cause us to be ill. Microbes also help plants with stress tolerance. They do this in many different ways. So especially for a lot more of the perennials, perennials can form associations with mycorrhizal fungi. And so when there's a lack of water, there's a drought or a prolonged period of dry weather like we've had over the last five weeks until this morning, then it it increases the root surface area by forming these associations with fungi to allow the plants to get water from further afield, which can help them overcome those challenges. Another example is when you have pollutants in the soil. There's so many fantastic microbes out there, for example, certain types of bacteria, which produce enzymes that can break down and detoxify bad soil. There are also some microbes that secrete growth promoting substances, which encourage overall vigor, plant growth, root development of our crops, which leads to better photosynthesis efficiency, biomass and crop yield. Microbes also help promote a really good soil structure. This is where we don't have compacted soils because with compacted soil, you have many issues. For example, rainwater can't properly soak in, the roots of the plants can't go down, but microbes improve that aeration of the soil. They make it more loose and friable, which is what we want when we're growing, say, annuals, for example. These are, these are a load of carrots coming through. And so by creating kind of more of a, a, a nice, loose, friable soil in a sense, it's just much easier for the water to go down and it's much easier for the roots to go down and it creates less stressed plants. Now that we know all of the amazing ways that microbes help out in our garden, let's look at the steps that we can take to build those those micro populations to help the garden microbiome. And just before we do that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare, because if you're a curious gardener like me, you're also probably curious about all sorts of other things in life. I've been a member of Skillshare for many years. It's my go-to place to learn any kind of skill, whether it's for my personal life or whether it's for 
basically my career. So one example in terms of the personal side recently is I'm enjoying cityscape photography and I'm taking some of those principles to try and capture the story of my town and its relationship with the sea. I'm having a lot of fun with that. And when it comes to my career, Skillshare has an absolute bunch of amazing courses all to do with kind of productivity, learning, honing in on skills. There's always something new to learn. I've been enjoying a course by one of my favorite YouTubers, Ali Abdal. It's a course called Learn Anything with Flashcards and I'm using it because I'm trying to find a better format or system to digest key information when it comes to me learning new kind of edible ornamentals and edible perennial varieties that I want to use within permaculture design. And on the subject of permaculture designs, I'm actually following a course at the moment called Adobe Firefly A Complete Guide. Adobe Firefly is a very interesting AI that I think as it progresses could be used as a really accessible tool for us to create and bring permaculture designs and concepts to life. If you have a kind of a burning desire to turn your, your hobby or your passion into a career or just to start to dabble with that idea, go to Skillshare. Even just taking one course could create a really positive ripple effect. And you can use my link down below to get a free month's trial. The first thing to do is to never ever use chemicals. Synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, all of these things are detrimental to the health of the microbes. And it means once you, I, I feel once you start that process of, of depending on them, it creates a vicious cycle and you just become more and more dependent as you lose the natural microbes. Work with the microbes, embrace them. They're, they're here to help. And we as gardeners should know that gardening is biology not chemistry. Secondly is to make your own compost. Homemade compost, be it doing a slow composting method or a hot compost that you inoculate with other things, is it's full of microbes. It's organic matter that is full of microbial activity that then when you pot things up, when you apply it to your garden, you're also applying those microbes, not just the minerals that we think that compost brings. Next is to follow the no dig principles or for my friends in America, it's known as no-till. The idea behind this is causing minimal disruption to the soil. When you dig or you fork over the soil, it, it's gonna impact the microbes, especially say the, the mycorrhizal fungi, all of those complex systems is quite destructive. And so by causing minimal disruption, it means that those microbes uh, can just survive and thrive. Another great way to promote good microbiology in the garden is using different mulch. Here we've mulched these tomatoes with grass clippings. So firstly, all of this grass has loads of microbes on the surface of the leaves that we're bringing in. But the other thing is to think a bit, a little bit like a sourdough starter. I say a, a good analogy is, is mulch is like adding flour to the sourdough starter because it's going to create that organic material that the microbes break down into then those digestible nutrients to help the plants. One of the key rules for a thriving natural garden is the idea of diversity. And in order to get a diversity of microbes, both above soil and in the soil, you wanna plant a diversity of different crops in a fairly small space. They're all gonna be sending out different types of root exudates, for example. So that's gonna support different kinds of microbiology. And by creating that diversity, again, it doesn't allow for one thing to just take over and cause more issues. So think polyculture whenever possible. Maintaining a fairly constant soil moisture is also absolutely crucial. So when it's too dry, it can cause, essentially it can cause all the microbes to go dormant. And so the plants aren't gonna be able to enjoy their benefits as much. But also when soil becomes waterlogged, it can kill off a lot of microbes. Now, sometimes this can be a good thing if you have a load of heavy rain, apparently when, when you get that flush, that flush that all of the plants show, it's not just because of the extra water in the soil, but apparently it's because it kills off some of the microbes, which release some of the nutrients that are plant available that the plants absolutely relish. But what you're aiming for is over the growing season, you want it to be just fairly balanced, not too much of either extreme. 
One really important thing to say with waterlogged soils is when it stays waterlogged for too long, it can become quite anaerobic and it can cause some anaerobic pathogens to start to take a hold. I did mention no dig earlier, but sometimes when you've had either soil that you've abandoned or you don't have enough compost or you're trying to create a new space on pretty degraded land, you can use something like a broad fork to loosen up the compacted soil nice and quickly and allow you to water in certain beneficial amendments that you've created, microbial amendments. For example, lactic acid bacteria. So that's the main use that I have for a broad fork is anything that I've abandoned, I want a quick win. I can gently loosen it much better than double digging. And then it allows me to get those microbes in nice and quick and let them get to work repairing the soil microbiology. Before I talk about why I'm next to this uh, blue barrel, I just want to summarize by saying that if, there, if there's one thing to take from this, if you're wanting to create a really healthy, microbially rich garden, is to just use the principle of diversity wherever, a diversity of techniques that I've just outlined for creating that, that beautifully thriving garden, but diversity of plants, polyculture, all of those things. And that is just a thing that continues to build year on year. Now, the final way to really, really help with soil diversity and soil microbes is to create a Jadam microbial solution. It is one of the easiest amendments that you can make just using leaf mold. And I've got a short, which you can watch right here, which just shows you how simple it is, how to apply it and Essentially, it's propagating a huge amount of natural microbes from your area and applying it to your garden.